Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you're new here, hey welcome. I hope you consider subscribing and if you're back as always, welcome back. Today I am here with my first video that is a progress check-in update on uh, my cross-stitch conversion to a diamond painting project. Uh, if you're new and you're not totally sure what I'm talking about, um, that's okay. This is actually my first kind of update video on this project. Um, I'll be sure to link to the playlist if you'd like to follow along. Uh, I've so far just shared an unboxing and kind of an outlining of um, what this project is and what it's gonna look like. But uh, in essence, just to give you a really quick recap, I have had this kind of bucket list diamond painting project in the works for quite a while. Uh, last spring and spring of 2021, I actually purchased and uh, got my hands on all the materials for this particular project. And uh, with this, I'll be converting a cross stitch pattern into a diamond painting on a blank canvas. So uh, I purchased the pattern Dragon Race Into the Night as a cross stitch chart from Heaven and Earth Designs. If you're curious, here's all the info. And don't worry, this is all information that is safe to share. If you didn't know, it is generally considered like, well, both for the sake of copyright and just good etiquette, not to show like large portions of a cross stitch chart uh, publicly because those are things that you purchase the rights to, if that makes sense. But this is all info that's public. <laughs> so uh, this is the original artwork of what I'll be working on. The artist for this is Rose Kahn and the chart design was done by Michelle over at Heaven and Earth Designs. There's info here about the design size and how many colors. There is a max color version of this piece, I do believe, on Heaven and Earth Designs, but I chose to go with the standard version, which has 88 colors. If you're curious about sizing, you're looking and going, what is 750 wide by 556 height? Um, to convert this into diamond painting measurements, so sorry if you can hear my neighbors, by the way, um, you can either divide this number by four or multiply it times 0.25, and that will give you the dimensions in centimeters. So 750, by 556 stitches converts to 187.5 centimeters by 139 centimeters. That is very large, but I really am convinced it's not undoable. <laughs> but what I decided to do to make it more manageable was to split it into four separate panels. And instead of having one massive canvas that was literally 187.5 by 139 centimeters, I split this into quadrants and ordered four separate canvases for each quadrant. So each canvas is roughly a hundred and, or sorry, roughly 70 centimeters by 90 something centimeters. So there's a little bit of extra left over um, on each canvas just for a little bit of wiggle room. But I, yeah, I think that that has made it more manageable, especially sticking with the 88 color version instead of the uh, max color version, which I think has closer to 200 colors. Anyway, um, I have been using Pattern Keeper um, on a, an, a, an Amazon Fire tablet. I almost said Android, it's not. It's a Fire tablet. Um, you can get Pattern Keeper and other Google Play apps on your Fire tablet. You just have to go through a couple extra steps. It's all above board and everything, but you can get Pattern Keeper. I just got this on actually uh, Prime Day last summer. So I got this Fire tablet for really, really cheap. And this is the Pattern Keeper app, just so you know. Um, I think that this is an absolute must have. <laughs> and for my storage, I have all of my colors kitted up into two Elizabeth Ward storage trays. Obviously, this is not literally every drill that I was sent because there are literally 417,000 diamonds in this project. <laughs> so I just filled up these containers kind of as much as possible. And I have a separate box that I have all of the extra drills left. Well, not extra, but all the drills that I couldn't fit into here. And I gradually refill as I get low, if that makes sense. I found it makes it really manageable because then I can have um, the colors, you know, all readily in front of me. I did sort these according to just DMC order because of how the Pattern Keeper app works and how I've found myself wanting to work on this project. So. I'm starting to get into already some of my learnings, but I want to start with, I wanted to start with just giving you that basic outline of um, what this project is. <laughs> now I did, I sourced both the canvas and the diamonds themselves from Cooper Diamond Art. Uh, the canvas is a double-sided adhesive and these are acrylic square drills. 
Um, I went this route because when I was placing my order back in April or May of 2021, um, this was just a really, really easy way to do it. All I had to do was send over the sizing and the floss usage chart over to Cooper Diamonds and they did all of the work for me. Uh, including, you know, talking me through like, okay, I want to split this into four panels. And uh, it did have a bit of a longer turnaround time because they turn around and order it for you. There are lots of other options, lots of other ways to do it, but I was really just going the convenient route and the place that I was seeing um, recommended the most at the time. Uh, where did I see the recommendation? In the Facebook groups. There's a couple of different Facebook groups, I believe, related to heaven and earth designs, and even some that are specific to heaven and earth designs diamond paintings. Um, and or converting their patterns into diamond paintings. I'll be sure to link those below. I highly recommend them. They've been really helpful resources. There's lots of really good beginner how to's as well as it's just a fun place to see what different projects people are working on. Um, this video is not going to necessarily be a dedicated like how to do one of these projects. This video is going to be and these other prog and these other progress update videos are going to be more about me just sharing like what my thoughts are and what my impressions are, what my learnings are from um, since the last time that we checked in, I will plan to a little bit further down the road once I've worked on this for a bit longer to do more of a dedicated, concise, like just quick, fast, easy how to video on how to order one of these projects, how to do one of these projects. So please stay tuned for that. I just wanted to feel like I had a little bit more experience with this before I turned around and started giving you guys advice. So let me go ahead and dive into some of the things that I have learned uh, since I began working on this project. So I've been working on this on and off for the past couple of months. Um, I've been going pretty hard on it for the past few days, actually, I've been spending a lot of time on it. Um, let me show you, though, what we've got so far. So let me move these out of the way. So I know you're probably dying to see what does it look like? <laughs> I did recently share an update on my Instagram, but here you go in person as well, or, you know, in person. It's really difficult to get this all in frame, but I think you get the idea. This is actually, this is a good part of it. Um, so you see, we've got this tree over here. We've got the start of this big dragon's wing here, as well as the knight or the warrior that's sitting on this dragon's back. And then we have kind of the dragons flying through the sky and the start of the castle. For reference, here is that original artwork. So you can see we've basically gotten here, right? And keep in mind, especially because right now you guys are maybe two feet from the canvas, maybe a little more than two feet. So any kind of odd things you're seeing with colors and shading, I think especially with the tree, do keep in mind that when you're standing back far enough to be able to see this entire piece, like all four panels, it's gonna come together beautifully. And I'm always amazed when I see people working on their projects in the Facebook groups and on Instagram and whatnot, when they have pulled back and you get to see it come into focus, how, how much more clarity there is and how much more those uh, colors and shading choices make sense. So for reference as well, in the pad, ooh, let me not drop my tablet. Um, in the Pattern Keeper app, one of my favorite things about it is that there are numbers and stats. So you can see how many I've stitched today, which that's how many diamonds I've placed, 933. And then how many total diamonds I've placed out of the total number in this kit. So I've placed 54,470 diamonds out of 417,000. And the percentage, 13.06%. It is crawling up slowly. Um, this has not been a small amount of time that I have spent on this kit <laughs> and to be at 13%. Um, <laughs> so that is, you know, I will take it though. This is, I knew this is going to be a very long-term project. And I think that having broken it into four separate panels is going to have been a very good idea because like right now there's a certain satisfaction with comes with that comes with knowing that I'm over halfway done with this particular panel. Um, because a quarter of, you know, one quarter panel is 25% and I'm at 13.06% and half of 25 is 12 point. Anyway, you get the idea. I think there's going to be a lot of satisfaction that comes with, okay, now I finished the panel and now I'm getting to start the next quadrant. Um, some things that you may notice, 
you can see some of the grid lines, I feel like, kind of peeking through here, especially in these light spots. Um, part of that was it was really difficult to center the drills perfectly because this is a double-sided adhesive canvas. And I find that once you've placed the drills that they really don't want to move very easily. And I just didn't really want to fight with it. Um, but I feel like once you do pull back, that's going to be a little bit less obvious, but that is just kind of a hazard of working on a blank canvas with a grid. I'm going to go ahead and bring you down actually so I can show you what this looks like and show you, uh, kind of give you a sense for how have I approached working on this canvas and I'll show you with pattern keeper and whatnot as well. Okay, so I have brought you down close so you can take a look at just kind of what my approach to this has been. Uh, first things first, I have to say that Pattern Keeper is an absolute must in my opinion. Um, I know that there are people that do these just with paper charts. I certainly think it's doable with a paper chart, but let me show you about why I feel like Pattern Keeper can truly make a huge difference. So how I've been doing this is that I work on these in columns. So if you look in Pattern Keeper, you can see that there are these dark black lines that break everything into squares of 10 by 10 drills. So there's 100, and drills, 100 drills in each of these squares. Um, I like that I can basically drag around and see like whatever I need to. And then what I'll do is I've cut these into strips and, oh, that's right, that's where there's a split in the cover, that's okay. Um, on the grid, it's really hard to see on the camera, but you can see how this line right here is just a little bit darker. In person, it's actually blue, and there's a blue line that goes down here, but I've cut these in columns, columns of 10 drills wide, so that what I can do is I open this up, I fold that over, and here I've got a square of 10 by 10 that is going to match what is in here. Now you can tell it's all white, so we're, we're completely working off of like transferring this cross stitch pattern to here. Now, one of the things that I love most about this, <laughs> truly, is that what I do is I'll be like, okay, now I wanna pick a symbol, and let's say I wanna pick this, just this square right here. I tap on it, and it, that's not a good example, better example. Let's say I wanna pick these flowers. You can see how it highlighted those flowers. You can pick the color that it highlights them in. I think the default was green. That's just what I did. Um, so those are where that color are going to go. And then over here, it has highlighted, even if it's like below the bottom of that DMC list, it's highlighted what the DMC is going to be. And I have left these in DMC order. So I go 796, okay, perfect. Seven, oops, sorry, I'm not looking at, this, at the actual thing. 796 right here. So I'd pull this out. Since there's just four in this area, honestly, I would probably just grab my diamond painting pen and pick and place straight out of here. And the way that my brain works is that I don't have, I don't find that I need to place marks on here. Some people will take, and I did this very early on, I took a Sharpie and before I placed any drills, I would take a Sharpie and just really lightly dot in the middle of the squares of each of the squares that I needed to place that drill and make sure that matched this matched what was on the chart. Oops. Um, and then placed those drills on the Sharpie marks. And then to confirm that like, okay, now I've placed those, it's correct. You tap this little button at the top, the little paintbrush button. And then there's this really nifty shortcut where you can press and hold any of the symbols, select all unfinished highlighted sections in the square. It has highlighted all of those. And then I tap the check mark, and then I tap the check mark, and it has colored all of those in for me. And then I go on and I pick the next symbol that I want to work on. And it has changed to the color of what that drill is going to be. Now, if you need to reverse that, I'm leaving that search arrow highlighted, I tap on that square, I can tap on the ink pen again, I uh, select all the finish highlighted and then there's the, the frog symbol. <laughs> and that means we're undoing that. And if you're a cross stitcher, that probably makes more sense to you. But anyway, this is one of the reasons I feel like Pattern Keeper is just invaluable. I think it's also very valuable because if a drill comes off or if I missed something, it's really easy for me to go back in and find exactly what I missed and um, pinpoint exactly what that symbol is supposed to be. Uh, you can zoom out, and this is kind of a fun thing I like to do. Don't worry, you won't be able to see the symbols in a moment. But I like that you can then 
zoom out and see that is like the entire painting, you know, and then I can zoom back in. So you'll notice also, by the way, that there are numbers over here on the side, like 50, 100, 150. And there's the same at the top. I think if I flip it this way, yeah, you'll be able to see it. That's a little better. Um, what I have also decided to do, and this I've seen other diamond painters do, so I certainly don't claim credit for this idea at all. But what I have also done is on the canvas itself, along the top and along the side, I have placed little stickers that note every 50 marks. So again, if a drill does come off and I have a blank space and I don't necessarily want to just eyeball it and pick a color that seems to be pretty close to that, um, I can go in and find a little more exactly like where that's going to be. Um, you can see the red arrow right here, by the way, as well as the red arrow over here. That is the exact halfway point of the chart, and that's where I stopped on this canvas up here is at that red arrow. The other lines that you're seeing, these denote page marks. So if you were to work off of a paper chart, that's literally how much of the chart would be on a single page. <laughs> so for reference, I've completed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish, a little over seven pages of however many there are. <laughs> uh, it's not like exact as you can see because it's got like a little bit of a cutoff, but that's what those lines mean. Um, so yes, like I said, biggest takeaway from this is that Pattern Keeper is an absolute lifesaver and I cannot fathom doing this project without it. Let me pull you back up. I want to talk a little bit more. So one other thing that I did learn and you may or may not have noticed um, while I was showing this to you is over here in this column, this is the DMC code and over here is the number of drills that you have left to place in that color. Now in diamond painting, we actually, we don't really have any diamonds that typically match these DMC codes under 150. Uh, thankfully, in the case of, in my case, where I sent all of this over to Cooper Diamond Art, what they did is they um, took these and they have a way to convert them into the closest match in the DMC. Do I have that chart here? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. But um, I actually, I really appreciated that like they, again, that was something that they took care of for me. I know that there are conversion charts out there, um, but there were like some colors, like for example, like this one right here, I made a note of what it was noted in the cross stitch version. Um, that it was 31, but they converted it to the DMC 155 as the closest match in like colors that are available for diamond painting. There are even a couple of colors. There was this one rather. <laughs> it was like, okay, there is like charted 907, but then there's also DMC 16 is going to be 907. <laughs> so um, this has been such an interesting project to work on. I've had a lot of firsts with this project. I think it's been really interesting and I'm glad that I'm not working on it just by itself. I have other projects going at the same time and sometimes I just take a break from this for a couple of weeks. Um, one thing that I have learned and something that is going to be a first for me and I'm feeling very uncertain about is that unfortunately these drills are popping. If you've seen me in this video just kind of like reaching out and pushing down drills, it's where I think I'm seeing popping drills and often Yep. See, I can, you can, I don't know if you can really even have heard that, but I hear it and I feel a drill snapping into place. Um, that is kind of a bummer. It's actually a really big bummer, but I am looking at it in a positive way. Did I just put, see, I'm even afraid to like run my hand over it because often when I run my hand over it, I will just pick up a drill. Like, <laughs> and the reason that this is a little bit more of a headache with a project like this is because if a drill pops up off, there's just a white square underneath. And it's a little bit more of a process for me to go back and try to figure out what color was supposed to go there. Now, in a lot of places, like over here in the tree where there's like so many different dark colors, if just one or two drills pop off and I just have to take my best guess and try to pick a color that's nearby just based on looks, can I do that? Of course I can. But when it feels like drills are prone to popping off often, um, I am nervous because I want this to be as true to the original artwork as possible. There aren't any 
visible issues with the diamonds. That's the other tough part is there are not tabs sticking off of these. They don't look like they're going to be problematic. Um, so what I've decided to do is I'm gonna try my hand at sealing a diamond painting. I'm Like I said, I'm looking at this with a positive spin. I just popped another one back down. Um, I've actually had people often, often ask, how do you like to seal a diamond painting? And my response is that is that over the course of working on, I think I've completed 70 like full-size diamond paintings at this point, like not the little snack ones, um, 70 full-size diamond paintings at this point from a huge variety of different companies, I have never had to seal a diamond painting before. Um, <clears throat> and so I have never been able to answer that question <laughs> because I've never done it. Um, and you know, if you've heard me joke in past other videos about how I'm like, oh, I'm not easy on my canvases and look, the drills are still sticking. I've been babying this canvas, like leaving it as flat as possible at all times. Um, and if I ever have to move it, I mean, I, I hang it flat. Um, it's never rolled up. It's never folded. I even try like not to let it go like, inward at all like even just when I pick it up you should see me I've got my hands up like this like trying to keep it super super flat um even when I'm shifting it to like hanging position like keep it flat keep it flat um so we're gonna try sealing it <laughs> I don't know um if I will put it on video I'm gonna have to seal this as I go I like I said I bought the materials um already based on just what I've seen a lot of different people recommend in the various diamond painting groups and I am gonna try it on a small section and see what I think and like I said I am just gonna seal seal as I go so that it's not even something that's on my radar I don't want this to be an anxiety inducing project I just want to um, be able to have laid the drills down and uh, know that they're going to stay um, I'm a very I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to diamond painting I even though like you're seeing some shifting here um, there aren't like more diamonds than they're supposed to be in those spaces or anything. And I feel like my placement is not bad. Um, so I don't think that's the culprit. I think it's just a hazard of acrylic drills sometimes. So like I said, I'm going to try my hand at sealing it and I will report back to you guys in the next progress update video. Um, but so far I have to say I am enjoying this project <laughs> and it's really really neat to see it come together the first section you know up here because I started up in that corner <laughs> and it was really really neat when I finally got to see some of the dragons coming together because you know lots of blue sky and dark tree branches that's that's fine but like come on I'm here for the dragons right <laughs> so while that was a little bit more tedious um this has been a bit more exciting there was some color blocking in here on the other hand this section, which is where I'm at now, oh my gosh, the confetti. I think you guys saw it when I was zoomed in on this section and showing you how I work on this. Um, but yeah, that confetti is, whew, those sections are taking me a lot longer to finish, but uh, it's really satisfying, but I'm approaching it as a marathon and not a sprint. This is, like I said, a long-term project. I really think it's gonna take me at least a year to complete. I don't think that I will probably have this done by the end of this year, but who knows? We're just gonna keep taking it one one day at a time and I'm going to follow my nose on it if I feel like I need a break from it I'll take a break from it um and that is a-okay <laughs> so anyway I think that that about wraps up this sort of progress check-in video with you guys um please let me know if you have any questions at all if you want to share any advice as someone that has worked on projects like this before if you have thoughts about sealing diamond paintings feel free to let me know because I suppose I could test out a couple of different sealers. I'm not planning on displaying this in my home, though a lot of you have, a lot of you have asked how I would otherwise plan to attach these panels together. And so I will test that out once this is complete so that I can share with you all how I feel like that could work. But all this to say that I think I could still safely try out a couple of different sealers and be okay if the overall finished effect, like literally, like even if it's all a clear gloss or something, it's like if it all, if it looks slightly, slightly different, like that's probably okay. But yeah, like I said, if you have any specific things that like you love to seal diamond paintings with or whatnot, 
uh, you're welcome to share that and I'll, I'll take it into consideration. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope that it was fun to finally get a project update on this. I'm sure that there are things that I didn't think necessarily to share on this, but I'll be keeping an eye on the comments and trying to, to respond to questions and other things that you guys are thinking as far as, um, what this project has been like. Again, this is Dragon Race Into the Night, my conversion of a cross stitch chart into a diamond painting. I'm at, like I said, 13.06% completion on this so far, having started it, I think at the end of January, so just a couple months ago. Um, but yeah, I'm having fun watching it come together. I hope that you guys are doing really, really well. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, would you please give it a thumbs up before you head out? And of course, if you're not already subscribed and want to continue to follow along with my progress on this project, along with seeing what other diamond painting content I have to put out there, feel free to subscribe and you can even hit the bell to be notified when I share new videos. All right, my friends, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.